Hello, Battle Ride fans, and welcome to Champions at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury333, with another set of replays. Also, still Skybrush. People have been offering replays, but it's been still, like, mostly just waiting. I mean, people have said, hey, I've got replays. Not that it matters. I mean, honestly, as of tomorrow, it won't really matter, because tomorrow, there's a big patch, which is going to be awesome. I mean, I realize I'm speaking as a Jade main, and Jade's getting a massive nerf in that she will no longer have a meterless material, but I don't care. The other things that she has are just better, and honestly, the meterless immaterial I didn't really like just because it was kind of basic. Like, she has a metered immaterial. She can just go immaterial. You don't need meterless immaterial. Just makes everything else much less useful. Anyhow, starting with Loco as Baco with Spy vs. Sirius against Commando MG. And have GSS Croak and Fusiosaur as Ashka. So right off the bat, we have Loco going for some... Ooh, nice. Managed to get off the mount. Managed to get Fusiosaur off the mount. And Commando MGS going for a few little attacks. No real benefit. But Skybrush able to get a few good hits. And, and nice! Nice Luna Strike there. Stopping Croak. That's what you want to do. I mean, Croak, they go cloak. You know they're going to go after you want to use. If you have something like Luna Strike, use it. And another good counter there. A lot of good counters coming from Skybrush. And the Luna Strike getting a nice dodge from Fusisaur, so Fusisaur doesn't really matter. The Fusisaur is about to go down thanks to that EX Crescent Strike and another... Ooh, not quite, but it worked out anyway. Loke's taking that kill with Commando MGS in a pretty good position. They could probably 2v1 this if they play it smart. A good Deceit here or there it could easily do it, and it looks like I think it will. Yeah, okay, actually more of the ultimate coming in there. But still, that's pretty much 2v1 territory. Commando MGS taking a fair bit more damage than I'm sure they like to. But it doesn't really matter, and there's that combat flush. Not a deceit, though. Surprisingly enough, they're saving their meter for another ultimate. Getting petrified again. Blue team not going for the center in the process. Still trying to get in a position they can finish off Commando MGS. And Commando MGS, once again, not deceiting. Doesn't really matter, though. And an ultimate coming in. Is that on? No! It still works out. Almost. Almost. Oh, that's painful. I mean, I thought Valiant Leap might have been off cooldown. It, I can't really tell. If Valiant Leap was off cooldown, that would have been perfect. Because it gives Valiant Leap, avoid the Venom Explosion, land on top of Commando MGS, and win. And it'd be a clear win. But no, instead, that was a draw. Which kind of sucks, honestly. I, I've, I've been in those situations before. So you think you've won, and nope. Little things like that. So yeah, that actually worked out for Commando MGS. But taking a bit of damage now, and Fuses are getting some focus. I mean, at this point, red team well split up, so that's not what they want to be doing, of course. You want to be nice and together, but no, they are in fact a bit more split up. Granted, it is melee and range. Blue team is much more keen on staying together. Red team, Ashka's, you know, Ashka's the hero that I can stand by. It is a ranged hero. But as it stands, it's actually their red team is dealing a great deal of damage. Small bits here and there, but it's working out. Skybrush not really healing a whole lot. Trying to hear a little bit, but honestly, not that much. And going for the ultimate in a really bad position. That ultimate was their death sentence. That was, that was their grave. They were digging their grave by doing that ultimate. I'm really surprised they went for that rather than just throwing EX Crescent Strikes or saving their energy for a more opportune moment because that was not good. For the amount of health they had, it was just not going to work out. And there we go. Red team takes that. Really, though, oh, that's that's got to be painful. It also kind of sucks because these games are actually a few weeks old now, so I'm sure Skybrush is a lot better than they are here. But that was kind of surprising, going for the ultimate like that. So, we'll see what happens next time. It looks like we do have a bit more of a shield bash oriented... Oh no, that's shield dash. Never mind. Loco's going for a very broad range of rights. Fuses are going for the standard rights for Ashka. Command of MGS going for the extra healing, which makes sense in a twos situation. Or at least without a support character. Even with a support character, it makes some sense, but definitely without one. And Commando almost getting stunned. Loka did not quite manage to hit in the wall. And as a reminder, they actually don't have the incapacitate battle right. Incapacitate on shield dash, I mean. And red team taking the center, or which really they already kind of have an advantage. Pushing the blue team out of the center and little mini 1v1s going on. Commando MGS doing a much better job than their teammate. Fusisaur and Skybrush pretty much not even. But Commando MGS pretty much taken down. They've taken down Loco. Just about. 
I mean, good camouflage stun there to get rid of Skybrush's ultimate. But Skybrush will be able to cast it again. Skybrush is very keen on casting their ultimates. And there it is. And there's the dead. No, not quite. Nope, they're not quite dead yet. But still, bad position. Good counter. Bad positions. Once that counters... I mean, the counter will be off cooldown in a couple seconds. But even then... Well, uh, let's... Yeah. Wow, okay. Loka getting pretty angry there. At any rate, yeah, it looks like this was not really a pre-made team. Anyhow, I'm also looking forward to the serious battle right changes, because those just... Well, serious changes in general, but definitely the battle right changes does feel like... Sirius is one of the series that is getting all their battle rights, or at least the ordering reworked, which is nice. It has been kind of needed. I mean, Sirius is... It is kind of a hero that pretty much has like a handful of useful rights. You just go for the same ones. Anyway, blue team getting another nice snare off on Fusisaur. And Commando MGS once again getting out in front but not able to, well, get out of the... Really, that's... I'm, like, I can kind of see the temptation for the weaken for Loco, but my experience, you really don't want that incapacitate. Getting incapacitate on shield dash, it's so useful. Now, of course, there's War Stomp, obviously. But I haven't seen a lot of EX moves used in this match at all, actually, from anybody. And we're talking grade 12 players, grade 11, grade 12 players, but surprisingly, no one's been using any EX moves here. Which, well, War Stomp would be really handy for Loco. Skybrush using EX Crescent Strike. Like, they were using it in a previous, well, I guess later. I think this might have been played before some of the other replays I casted. But anyway, that was that. Red team taking that hand delay pretty much because blue team didn't really have much. Like, I don't know how to really describe it. They just, they just never held a position. They never focused anything properly. That, let's just move on to the next game, which will hopefully be played a bit better. I mean, like I said, these I think are earlier games than the ones I previously casted. So... Vianas, hey Vianas, we saw them in a previous game with Skybrush in this replay set. So Vianas is Freya with Skybrush as the sheep, the Sirius as always. I don't know how I forgot the name of a sec. With Lucy as Rook and Demo Style as Ashka. Demo Style being Skybrush's common partner, but apparently this time Rem they are their enemy. So this map. Let's see what people go for. I mean, this map, I actually kind of like this map. It's just one of those maps that, for stuff like, look, behind us, for instance, for Freya, of course, you want walls. You want to be able to hit static opponents into walls with your hammers. And that's a thing which you want to be able to do, but you also need walls. And this map's okay for that. It's kind of a mix between the two different, the day-night versions of the Sky Ring. You have the outside, like, parallel to the center line rings, wing center line walls here and then perpendicular ones over in the top left bottom right so a bit of a mix and hey got, already got the crowd control going off there so behind is doing a nice job and wow dembo style getting focused down i mean serious i don't know if they've been playing sorry skybrush i don't know if they've been playing with demo style much at this point we saw other replays where demo style and skybrush were working really well together but man not letting Demo Style get away with anything, and killed by the ultimate. Well, hey, Skybrush's ultimate did something this time around. So that's good. Good avoidance of the counter there. Thunder Slam is a, or Thunder Clap rather. Definitely a good way of getting around. Both of them, actually. Both Thunder Clap and Thunder Slam. Both good ways of avoiding counters. They do not trigger counters. Actually, I gotta say, overall, blue team you're doing a good job not triggering counters. And I gotta point out, I would be remiss not to point out, EX Crescent Strike use. So Skybrush is definitely using that. Oh, nice weekend right before getting hit. Right in the middle of the rush. Good timing. And with that center orb, that'll probably... It's still kind of anyone's game. I mean, a few good hits from Lucy could do the trick. Ah, nice job. Ooh, that incapacity did not quite last long enough for the outside ring to... Oh, wait, the outside ring didn't matter. That stun you wanted to do. Incapacitate in the outside is no big deal because the damage just 
gets them out of incapacitate. But that was a good first round for blue team. Very close, mind you. I mean, like I said, it was kind of anyone's game. Good counters from Bahanas, good shields. I mean, overall, it was really clutch, but it worked out. And Skybrush just dealing the damage, keeping everything alive. So yeah, on to round two, looks like Vianna's going pure hammer build. That is Vihanas' play. All the hammers, Skybrush, of course, going for blinding, Celestial Split, and Demo Style, of course, going for shield on jump. And like, all these battle rights, man, I'm I'm really looking forward to see what happens in the next patch, because these battle rights are very typical. This is just how those characters are played. At least as of version 0 0.7. With version 0 0.8, we'll find out tomorrow. Well, actually, we won't, because it'll take about a week or two for at least some metagame to be developed properly, but we will at least have a bit of a difference going on. Anyway, in the meantime, looks like Red Team is managing to get a lot of momentum here. Good Petrify. Oh, Petrifying Capacity. This is a perfect time to deal with Dembo Style, but Dembo Style is just sort of let alone. And, I mean, it makes sense. Behind is needed to recover, but that's one of those things where it's just... You get a lot of damage early on, and trying to recover from it ends up forcing you out of a fight at a really opportune time. And you just don't get that timing, and at this point, there's not much Skybrush can really do. Good Luna Strike, but Demo Style hits once. That's it. Done. Even with the Weaken. Wow. That was very little. So. That's, I mean, really going to come down to momentum, this matchup here. I mean, essentially, if they can dodge Lucy's first rush, should be fine. If they don't, then... <clears throat> excuse me. Then it'll be a bit of a problem, obviously. Anyhow, Vanus going away from the hammers, going for spring to shields. Which makes a lot of sense, because they really do need that. And good incapacitate. They can focus on Dembo style now. Blue team trying to focus on Dembo style, but a nice rush, and now Vahana's in a really bad position. Terrible position. And with Skybrush coming in to try to save, Skybrush may actually just put themselves in an even worse position. Yeah, they are putting themselves in a much worse position, taking 100 some odd damage from that. Oh, that rock was luckier. But even then, even without a lucky boulder toss, ooh, nice try with the meat bolts. I mean, that would be enough to, oh, just barely, almost enough. Now would be enough, for sure. Probably see another one once the energy is built up. But Vahana's taking a huge amount of damage. Demo style, actually gotta pop back a bit to watch what happened with Demo style. Demo style and Vahana's is a little 1v1 here, which actually ended far sooner. So yeah, with Demo style and Vahana's, it was just... Vahana's basically not able to really do a whole lot, honestly. That seems to be the way it went. Demo style avoiding all of Vahana's attacks. Vahana's finally getting Demo style out of there, but Vahana's is taking a lot of damage. Oh, that shock ball attack triggering counter has got to be so painful. Oh, because of course, like... Vihanas obviously just wanted to get Rook out of there, and then Rook's counter just said no. No, absolutely not. So, that, I mean, even then, that would have been really just a matter of desperately, hopefully it works. I mean, Shockfall Incapacitate isn't bad, but still. With the amount of health they had, it was like they would have had to kill Dembo Style taking no damage within like two or three seconds, and then kill Lucy without taking any damage. It's just... So, once again, a lot of momentum coming in. Lucy managing to hit shots. Getting petrified. There we go. Dembo style once again taking the focus of Blue Team's assault. But escaping out of there. And a missed rush. But a hit. Boulder toss. Knocks Skybrush out of position. And in a really nice spot for Lucy. Okay. Skybrush manages to get out of there. Not unscathed, but still manages to get out of there. And Blue Team gets the center orb. So at least they have some potential here. And the boulder toss getting dodged nicely. So Skybrush... Oh, that armor break is so useful here. I mean, it's worth pointing out the armor break is on Boulder Toss. It's also worth pointing out that that's not going to be a thing in version 0.8. But yeah, that aside, that armor break is doing a lot of work. And another ultimate coming out. Not really helping all that much. Dembo style getting helped a lot by that ultimate. And this is game. Nice little finishing flame strike there, but that does it. We'll rush into Firewall plus Flamestar. Oh, man, all the things. All the things together. That's just done. So, yeah. That was that. I think the next... Let's hope the next match is a win. I just feel kind of bad throwing into all these matches that are just losses. I just picked them at random.
Honestly, it was a big set of replays. Picked them at random. Just made sure to avoid the players being the same. So this one is Skybrush and Demo Style again, together again. Demo Style still playing the Ashka with Bill's Best as Taya and Drashk with Pearl. So I'm going to guess that Drosh is going to go for the charge on Dive. Bill's best? Mm. Yeah, with Taya. There are a few R1 options, but they're going to go for the cooldown. Cooldown reduction on haste. That makes sense. So yeah, let's just see this stint going. So, let's see. Skybrush. Skybrush really desperate to get in, and nice wind bomb does only manage to hit Skybrush. Skybrush managed to heal themselves, so not a huge drop. Demo style taking a fair amount of damage. But Luna Strike, ooh, getting dodged. Nice dive. Gets rid of that. Nice. Charge shot misses. Well, actually, Drash didn't manage to hit with the charge shot in the first place. Charge for Skybrush hit. And red team grabbing that center orb, which is the right thing to do, of course. So at this point, oh, that was red team, right? Like. Yeah. It's hard enough to tell. It looked like, yes, red team did just manage to take it. Demo style taking a lot of damage, and once again another dive. I mean, the thing is, it is using the dives, but the dives also do charge the, the weapon. They, so like, the charge volatile water. That's the thing. So you don't really like that happening. Granted, of course, it's also using up an escape. So at this point, the petrify finally goes out, and that's it for. Bill's best. For Drash getting the counter out. Not getting the charge. I don't think any charged Volatile Waddles have hit, actually. I think Volatile Water hasn't done anything, in all honesty. A fine battle right. So yeah, blue team taking that pretty convincingly. I mean, when it comes down to it, there's just charge attacks hit for Sirius. They did not hit for Pearl. Both heroes depend a lot on their charge attacks and their charged left mouse button attacks. Or charged M1s. So that's pretty simple. And Drash comes with splash damage. Wind Bomb Vortex. And of course shield and blind on well shield on Searing Flight and Blind on Celestial Split. None of which is surprising. But what is kind of surprising is that blue team didn't take the center at all. Red team's got that hard. Skybrush trying to push in, but that was really risky. Thankfully for them, didn't take much damage. Just got knocked away by a nice wind strike. But even then, blue team finally taking the center. Red team being held out a little bit. Good Luna Strike, by the way. Got them out of the way. And blue team takes the orb. I think, yeah, there's the ultimate going to come out pretty soon for Skybrush, most likely. Just knowing how they like to play. And hey, charge wall to water hit. Should be seeing an ultimate most likely. Oh, no, we're not. Hey, EX Crescent Strike. That's good. That's probably a better option, in all honesty. <laughs> because otherwise, Drash will just charge up with volatile water and then silence in the middle of the ultimate. That's just how it'll work. But never mind. The dive had gone, was on cooldown, so there was no way out of that. No way to charge vaults of the water, and of course, no way to stop that or get out of there. And counter wouldn't work. So, good strategy there from Blue Team. Assuming they were planning to get Drosh off cooldown, or on cooldown rather. Demo style going for better extra healing. Drash going for the fading snare on dive and healing all around. Healing where possible. Blue team's got this pretty solidly, though. I don't... Ooh, nice wind bomb. Forcing the use of the escapes. Not dealing any damage, but forcing the escapes. What's going to work from there? Looks like nothing. No, not a whole lot actually capitalized on that. I mean, the escapes are down for like 10 seconds, so... That was actually a lot to capitalize on, but no, no additional X strikes or anything. And red team, I think, got that. Yes. No, 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 no. blue team got it. Never mind. It's hard to tell. Like, when it's such a close steal like that. But no use in the ultimate. Bill's best didn't really do much with that, surprisingly enough. They didn't... Was there any boom? I don't think any boomerangs were even thrown during that. So, ultimate coming out for Skybrush. That should finish this off. That should be game. Bill's best might have a way out of this, but I kind of doubt it. Okay, as I say that, a tornado throws out, so literally a way out of there. But, since that's on cooldown, that's all they can do. So yeah, nicely done to the blue team. I think this is just going to be a big setup with lots of 3-0s, 3-1s. I don't, I don't know if there's any 3-2s in this set. 